location for Saturday, April 16th. Hope for how one Rust Belt city is trying to save itself one house at a time. We don't go around here and talking about utopian visions. We just got to get neighborhoods cleaned up. PBS NewsHour Weekend is made possible by Louis B. and Louise Hirschfeld Cullman, Bernard and Irene Schwartz, Judy and Josh Weston, the Cheryl and Philip Milstein family, the City Foundation, the John and Helen Glessner Family Trust, supporting trustworthy journalism that informs and inspires. Sue and Edgar Walkenheim III. Corporate funding is provided by Mutual of America. Many of the nation's most economically distressed populations, as mapped by zip code, are concentrated in the so-called Rust Belt across the upper Midwest. A city that has come to symbolize the distress of deindustrialization is Youngstown, Ohio, which still suffers from high unemployment and crime rates. But after decades of decline, there is an innovation movement underway there to rebuild homes, remove blight, and attract employers. And tonight's signature segment, NewsHour special correspondent Carla Murthy takes a look at how that plan is working. The story is part of our ongoing reporting on the issues of poverty and opportunity in America called Chasing the Dream. This house on the south side of Youngstown has been vacant for eight years. The city condemned it after a fire inside. Now it's being torn down. Robert Morris lives next door. He says he's glad to see these abandoned homes in his neighborhood finally get demolished. This, this neighborhood right here, this used to be high class over here. I mean, this whole South Avenue corridor was all, it was nice, it was really nice. These demolitions are part of a citywide plan to eliminate blight and rebuild. Since the 1950s, Youngstown's population has declined by 60 percent, from about 168,000 to 65,000, and is still shrinking. Thousands of empty homes have been left behind, crippling the housing market and eroding the social fabric of this once mighty industrial base. When the steel mills closed in the 1970s, Youngstown lost 40,000 good-paying jobs. Today, almost 40 percent of residents live below the federal poverty line, earning less than $24,300 a year for a family of four. What's a city to do as a city? Pick itself up, dust itself off, and start all over again. Move forward together. Hunter Morrison is an urban planner who has worked on rebuilding Youngstown since 2002. He says the plan started with a simple premise, except that the city was smaller. In America, the entire business of planning uh, and development is based on the phenomenon of growth. So what happens when communities see themselves shrinking? Over the last 14 years, this new smaller mindset has been the guiding vision for the city, which took stock of its assets, like Youngstown State University with 14,000 students. The city and the university developed blighted land to connect the campus to downtown, which now is new housing and more places to go out. Today, if you talk to a student, they go down to the restaurants. Some of them live downtown, never would have lived there before. But beyond downtown, the city didn't have the resources to fix its broken neighborhoods. Fewer residents means less tax revenue. So in 2009, the city created a new nonprofit, the Youngstown Neighborhood Development Corporation, or YNDC, in partnership with the Raymond John Wien Foundation. We could walk to my house if you want to keep going. Ian Beniston is the executive director. He grew up in Youngstown. His father worked at a steel mill until it closed in 1980. We don't go around here and talking about utopian visions. I mean, we're dealing with the real basics here. We just got to get neighborhoods cleaned up. The YNDC has an annual budget of $3 million. The group surveyed every neighborhood in the city to figure out where it can make the biggest difference and create more stability. Our focus as an organization is on those neighborhoods in the middle, neighborhoods that have many signs of distress, but they're not to a point where we have 70 or 80 percent vacancy so that even in the future we do at least have these pockets, if nothing else, of, of healthy neighborhoods. One of the first neighborhoods the YNDC targeted is called Idora, where a quarter of the houses were vacant, like this one currently being renovated by the YNDC. Tiffany Sokol has been overseeing this project. We've been able to acquire a lot of properties at zero cost, either through bank donations or um, private personal donations. 
Many homes of YNDC acquires are foreclosed properties and are renovated with the help of AmeriCorps volunteers. There's an abundance of vacant homes, but unfortunately the quality is very low. So part of what we're doing here is trying to raise the standard and raise the quality of homes available. A couple blocks away is a house the YNDC just finished. This one was built in the 70s, so it's really out of character for the neighborhood. It's listed for sale for $40,000, above Youngstown's median home price of $31,000, but affordable in this market. Have you had any problems getting people to buy the homes that you've renovated? No, most of our homes generally we end up pre-selling before we're even done with the rehabilitation. The YNDC helps potential buyers who have low to moderate incomes through housing counseling and mortgage financing. In the past six years in Idora, 137 abandoned homes have been demolished, 35 homes have been renovated and sold, and 88 occupied homes have been repaired. This was a house we fixed too. So this Today, was the occupancy rate of this stripped down, rebuilt neighborhood is 93%. Wait till you see it, it's pretty awesome. Beniston showed me one more feature he's using as a selling point for Idora. So oh, wow. This natural waterfall right in the middle of the city. There was literally nine vacant houses half a block from here, so wow. yeah, but not anymore. Brownlee Woods is another neighborhood where the YNDC works. Nancy Martin and her husband Russell have lived here since 1982 and over the years watched people leave as their neighborhood declined. We can do one of two things. You can either sit here on the porch and complain or you get up and do something. These are the benches we just put in. She's president of her neighborhood association and meets regularly with the YNDC, which also helps residents develop their own neighborhood action plans, identifying homes that need to be demolished or fixed up. They bring a, a list of all the houses that we're working on, and we go through each one. One house that was falling apart was owned by an out-of-town businessman. Ian Beniston stepped in. And he told him, are you going to do anything with this property? Because if you're not, we're taking it. The community is taking over that house, and the YNDC brought more than a dozen other houses up to code in Brownlee Woods. We are making progress. I mean, we know that in terms of owner occupancy, vacancy data. However, there's still large swaths of the city, the most distressed swaths, where people are still leaving. In those areas of Youngstown with heavy vacancy, the focus is on simply eradicating blight with board ups, demolitions, and cutting the grass. Robert Morris is happy to see his neighborhood getting cleaned up, but he's skeptical things will really improve. Do you think this area will ever become what it once was? No, no, I doubt it. No. It's over. No jobs, nobody got jobs. Everybody's out there trying to hustle, make their buck, you know. That's, it is what it is. I'm going to get my cell phone about maybe another year or two here. But Dawn Griffin not. says she's had a hard time finding a job in Youngstown and thinks about leaving. Unemployment here is 8.5%, 3.5% above the national average. Griffin, a single mother of three, remembers a better time when her father worked at the steel mills. I thought we were rich, you know, and we were, you know, pretty well off, you know, but what is here? She also feels like the city isn't doing enough, especially in low-income neighborhoods like hers on the east side of Youngstown. One of my questions was, okay, you're removing the blight, okay, but what's going to be there? And it's nothing but a slab of concrete there. No one wants to invest in that, you know, like, you can't do it all, like, a little bit. You got to go all the way. I asked Beniston about their critique. Boarding up homes, mm -hmm. grass cutting. I mean, how is that really going to make a big difference? Yeah, that will improve the quality of life for the people that are living there now, but by no means am I trying to say that in the most distressed of places, just cutting the grass and boarding up the houses is, is sufficient. Uh, I'm saying it's a reality uh, uh, of the lack of resources. And, you know, one of the things that we need more of here, without a doubt, is just jobs. I mean, that's the reality of it. That's why people leave. So until we can get to a point where we're attracting, developing, creating even here locally more jobs. Uh, uh, we're going to be, we're going to be struggling to get to where we need to be. Part of Youngstown's plan to create more jobs is to change its image from a city dominated by steel. We're still primarily manufacturing focused. 
Um, but there are um, other industries that are emerging. Sharon Woodbury, Youngstown's Director of Economic Development and Community Planning, is trying to lure technology entrepreneurs to the city. Um, so uh, this is America Makes. And she points to America Makes, a national institute for 3D printing, and also the Youngstown Business Incubator, which has created almost 400 jobs at tech startups in Youngstown since 2011. But unemployment is still on the high side it is. here, right? It was a decline over decades. It's a rebuilding that's going to take some significant time. There are a lot of obstacles in older industrial communities. Urban planner Hunter Morrison says progress may seem slow, but not when you understand what's happened across the region. These communities are, are very much like New Orleans. New Orleans lost half its population over a weekend. Flint. Cleveland, Youngstown, Detroit lost it over a generation. It's a major trauma to a community. It takes a long time to get, get over it. How do you stay hopeful? I mean, is, there a, is it a false sense of hope? Uh, I, don't, I mean, for me, it's not a false sense of hope because I, you know, I have a pretty good memory and I, I know, for example, what this neighborhood looked like. I've also seen streets change where, you know, dozens of houses have been removed, others have come back to life. Uh, I feel good about the progress that we've, that we've made. Have, am I satisfied with it? Certainly not.